Hey young guys, I'm Ethan, I'm one half of Trip and Oz. I'm gonna give you a rig rundown of our house. It is a 2020 FX4 Ranger. Basically one below the Wild Track and one above the XLT. Um, Wild Track, I had as a tub, I don't like the tub, and as a fancy sports bar and um, a tub, little door thingy, yeah, not for me. Um, uh, the reason why I went the FX4, not the XLT, is because of the rim size and also leather seats. I'll show you now. So we're at the bull bar. It's an ARB Summit bar uh, with the matching side rails. I use the side rails to get up and out of the car every day. So it's got a two inch lift, but you kind of need it. Uh, we've got the Type X Pros, Steadies. Um, if you're using them and seeing Australia, you're not seeing much in my opinion, um, but they do put out a good beam and I would buy them again. I like their outer ring and their uh, covers on them, just makes them look apart. Um, I've got a 10,000 pound Bush Ranger winch, um, yet to use it, um, but it's got a wireless remote, so that's pretty well sold it. Uh, I got a um, GME Aero. It's good enough for me. Uh, I haven't really used it that much. It's just to get around trucks, but whenever, it's good enough. It's not too much in a vision. She did whinge about it for the first couple of months, but now she's not, so we're winning. Underneath, got an ARB under vehicle protection with an eight ton recovery point. Um, I don't do the big full, full driving stuff, um, but they, it's pretty well done its job. There's a couple of rock chips under there and a couple of grazers. So they're doing their job. Happy with that. I, I more than likely would buy that again. So I just like it, it looks fun. Um, Safari, V-Spec Sporkle, V-Spec Sporkle, old school. I like it. Suspension is old man emu the whole way through uh, with a 3.5 GVM upgrade. So. To put a canopy like this on, um, you're going to need the GVM upgrade 100%. Um, they're very heavy. You will find out once you start doing the mass for them, they are very heavy. Um, I've got the extra leaf in their um, leaf springs here, which gives me an extra 150 kilos to myself. Not to the badge, so I'm still at 3.5, not at 3.65, um, just handy. Uh, you will see some airbags in there. I'm actually new to them. I only got them the other week. I'm running about 15 PSI. It actually feels comfortable there. I only got them just to help out the leaf springs a little bit, and just to take the weight off them. Um, let me know in the comments if you have them and what you run with your Ranger, because I'm not too sure at the moment. I'm just testing them to see what I like about them, but at the moment I am liking them. Um, uh, we've got the water here water inlet i've got a seven liter water tank just sits in between the uh, tray there i actually originally thought we we're going to shower with it uh, i thought actually she's going to shower with it um but we actually don't have enough water so that seven liters will last us about seven days so that's for washing up and drinking water so yeah it's is what it is but um it is gravity fed now. I did have a 12 volt pump, the reason why for the showering. Um, but yeah, not enough water, like I said. So gravity fed, my pump actually got blocked up. And so I kind of took the pump out and just haven't had time to put it back in. Um, but it is what it is. I don't know if it will even go back in. In here is a little uh, switch. Basically just a switch right there for it uh, when it is in there. And the worst thing is when the pump's in, you can actually can't really use it as gravity fed. It's just not quick enough. But if you're not gonna shower with it, gravity fed is perfect. Move on to the back. Second spare tire, or first spare tire, whatever you call it. Looks apart. Bin bag, you need these bin bags to turn, in my opinion. You just keep the rubbish outside the cab or the canopy. Um, these zippy ones, absolute shit out. Pilbara dust gets in, in there, salt gets in there, and wrecks your zip. It's onto its second zip and we don't even do it up most time. So we'll, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting another one, but there's no point buying a new one. 
uh, the ladder to get up and into the canopy. I'll just put that up quickly. I'll show you the trundle drawer. Trundle drawer, basically got all the recovery gear in there. That I actually haven't used much of. I haven't pulled anyone out. I haven't been pulled out, but it's there for when I need it. Um, you'll probably ask why it's not very long because of the water tank is the other end of it. So it's only like a meter, but it's good enough. It fits a fair bit in, as you see. There's a fair bit of weight there, so. You'll see where their airbag valves are mounted. Uh, you'll see there my uh, reverse steady lights, little flash mount ones. Uh, they actually are really good. Um, this is the Hayman Reese X bar. They reckon it's the only four wheel drive tow bar, oh sorry, bull bar, tow bar. Only tow bar on the market for four wheel drives. Yeah, it's got about an extra 100 mil clearance. So if I'm gonna start going over mounds and rocks and stuff, whatever, a bit more clearance there. Uh, these are two four ton recovery points and that's an eight. And there's me uh, reverse camera right there. Oh, I do like the look of it. It looks bloody cool if you ask me. Yeah, I like it. Uh, moving on to the side, um, diesel tanks. These come with a 60 litre tank, which is absolutely not good enough. So I went with an AOB 140 litre Frontier tank to replace that one. Uh, that's not quite enough. Uh, so I don't have much room for Jerry's, as you would see. Um, so I went with a Brown Davy sub tank. Uh, so that's 125 litres. So we've got 265 litres on board, which is pretty damn good. You're probably wondering how far I've get um, out of the two tanks. My best is 1700. And I reckon I can get better. Um, just depends on how much dirt drive I'm doing or full drive I'm doing. But it is very handy. I don't get oily, greasy, oh, oily, diesely hands when I'm putting in my, um, jerry can so i do like it in the um cab there's a gauge yeah i'll show you when i get into there um how i transfer it but down here there is a 12 volt pump i think you're seeing it yeah it's down here somewhere it's down there somewhere um basically that gauge i um hit that it sucks it from this tank into this little t-piece you might be able to see just there and then goes into my ARB Frontier tank. So basically just transfer it to fill it up. There's um, four ports in here, two breathers and two fill ports. So the bottom fill port goes to the front tank and the top fill port goes to the back tank. So that's basically how I fill it up, go through there. Um, works good and I'd buy it again. It's yeah, just save me in dirty hands. And it is a little bit of weight over the back axle, but it probably only weighs about 15 kilos, not even that probably without feeling it. So if you don't want feeling it, or you just want 20 litres in it, or 40 litres, yeah, it's pretty damn handy. Yeah. Um, uh, I got a Darchi awning. Uh, we did have another tent. We got rid of that in the first week and ordered that. Um, if I had my time again, I would go Bush Company awning to match with the Bush Company tent. Uh, the tent, we absolutely love it. It is the best thing that you can buy. Um, I'm not even gonna say different companies. I think all the clamshells are a great idea. Um, just so easy. Um, you want everything to be easy on the road and that makes things so much easier. So you got, you'll see my um, max tracks are mounted to it. They uh, mount it to it like that, right there. But there is my self uh, aerial. It's actually been, I've actually halved it. So it's a little bit bigger. Um, hit a tree, I guess, on the Gook truck a couple of months back. Um, I mount my second spare tire up there with a gas body, you'll see. And there is my portaloo. And there's a stand up paddleboard paddle right there. You're probably asking when I open that up or when it's open, does it close on me? No, 
the other week I actually had all that stuff off on top of it off and it made it so bloody hard to close that I actually forgot how hard it was. So they actually a good purpose up there. Probably lots of wind resistance going on there, but I need it, it is well worth it to have that stuff. Um, you could bolt anything to it, really. You can bolt your shovel, your high lift jack. Probably the only thing you can't bolt is your missus to it. And uh, I'll have her in the front seat with me. Um, you'll see right here is where you can put a ladder. So they come with a um, collapsible ladder. And you can swap them around. Obviously, like I said, you can bolt it anywhere you want. Um, so if you did have just a canopy without doors or just a back entrance or you just had on top of a um, canopy without the um, doors or there's windows you could just put your ladder on there and get in through one of the side windows but why bring the ladder when i got the um, ladder right there so that works out perfect for me they are a great tent i will put it up shortly for you and show you uh, but beautiful uh, moving on inside the canopy. So this is our cooking side. You gotta make everything easy on the road. You just don't want it hard. Um, so I made it easy as possible. So Boss Aluminium, I um, told them what I wanted basically and how I wanted it. And they done it their way, which I feel like they done an absolute ripper of a job. I'll show you any out. So there's the cooking site. So I just have to use it. So that is our baby Q. Gas ball mounted in there. It's not at a bad height. It's not too bad for me. Jacinta's a little bit shorter. So she has her stool, which you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, that's our cupboard up there. I'll just open this up. These little yellow things, you need two ends. I just use a GoPro. It's got a map there for a talking point, you know, when you're talking to someone and you you don't know where the bloody hell they live, so you just bring them over here and they tell you, it does have a hole. Whoopsies. So that's just nice, quick, and easy. And put that away. Use the GoPro again. So pretty well packed up. Now we can leave now. Um, just how easy that is, it just makes things good. So that's our cupboard up there, like I said. Our utensils and a couple of jars got the back, sources down the bottom. That's pretty well like a laundry. Um, and lots of bod stuff up there. Um, so the MSA DS95 drop down slide. Absolutely magic these things are. These work so well. And that would be there over 100 kilos. I've pretty well done it one hand. Um, like I said, I'll take my hat off to these um, fridge slides. That is so good. That's 100 kilos, probably about a metre and a half out. You know, you can't even lift a jerry like that. Like, they are awesome. Um, that's the 96 litre ARB fridge. Yeah, really good. You'll see it's got an outlet cable there. We charge our phones on this side. Um, one thing I did struggle with is what to do is with your cable. But what I've done is put it on a bungee. I did extend it to make it a little bit longer. So if I had my time again, I'd buy a, a cable long enough to suit. But that doesn't get jammed in in here. Um, that's the best thing I've come up with myself. So that's pretty good and I like how that works. That is good enough. And Jacinta can do this on her own, which is great. I think I just have to do this lock again. So it's just got this little lock here, you'll see. Sorry for the shaky camera, but we're on now, there we go. It's kind of a two-hand thing, that thing is. Move on to the compressor, which just sits in here. A little uh, single cylinder ARB compressor. Uh, good enough for me. Um, as you'll see, we build one of these things, just everything gets expensive and adds up, and I'm happy with that. And it's hard mounted into there and hard mounted to my crank battery under the bonnet. So basically when I pump things up, I like to leave it on. I always leave the car on, sorry. Um, always reason I don't want a flat battery. Um, yeah, that's a must do um, with full driving. 
I was doing a little bit of YouTube, trying to work out how, what they do with four-wheel driving and that, and what's the secret. Basically, everyone was pretty well saying the secret is a good tyre gauge, which I got a good tyre gauge, and a compressor. And then you can go anywhere, so, which I do a lot more of now. So, obviously, on the bitumen, I put it up, make sure all my pressures are right, so my tyres wear good enough together. Um, with the dirt roads, I like to drop them down as well. So, I'm pretty well... Always dropping, uh, seeing you need to. Um, yeah, you definitely need to. I drop down about 16 and 20 on this uh, real sandy stuff, 20 on the back. Um, this eight meter hose pretty well gets everywhere. We'll get the um, front right tire. I just have to go around this way. Um, good enough. I like how they're um, hard mounted, hard wide as well. Just, you don't have to pop the bonnet, put your positive negative on, it's just, Nice and easy. So that's that side. The cooking side. I'll take you over the other side. So this side is basically toolbox. That's all got our hiking gear in there. They're a decent size. You'll see there, there's my hardcore solar blanket. I'll start yarning on about that in a minute. Um, just got a couple of hockey straps, probably overkill. A lot of overkill there to be honest. Um, they're just to tie things in so I can move them. Um, you will see me, or you, so you would have heard me yarning on about this um, cell fire aerial. There's a cell fire in there mounted. Um, basically, if you don't know what they are, if you get 2 bar 3G, it'll boost it to about 4 bar 3G, and it's enough to make a phone call or scroll through Instagram or scroll through YouTube. So, good enough, I'd buy it again. They pretty well paid for its money in the first night, so good shit. Um, 2000 watt inverter from Red Arc. Uh, yeah, good enough. Yeah, we only really use it for the toaster and the kettle and charging the laptop every now and then. Probably overkill, but good enough. In here is a 200 amp hour Lithium battery from Safri. Um, as I'm talking about now, I'll put it up a uh, screen recording of its app. It is handy, good enough. It's basically, in my opinion, like a middle range 12 volt system. Um, you can spend a lot of money on 12 volt systems and this is pretty expensive as well. I think it was about eight and a half grand. Boss Aluminium done the whole work and I think that's with all the um, battery and the inverter as well. So. Actually quite cheap in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so it's a middle range. You can go to the fanciness, you can spend so much ridiculous amount of money on that side, but it is 100% good enough and we've tested it out well and truly. Um, so just quickly a couple of numbers. So the 170 watt solar pumps in about 7.5. I put the um, blanket and the hard mount in a parallel circuit. So basically connect the two solar panels there. That is the solar panel from there. That's the solar panel wire. Put them together and I roughly get about 13 amps to about 15 amps input. Um, you're probably asking uh, how long does the battery last with the fridge? Um, with the solar is though I can tell you, I've had it sitting um, at home, just the canopy with the solar and the fridge running, and I could have left it there for weeks. Um, it, yeah, it will last. Uh, we do have a freezer that when I get inside, I'll show you. Um, I need good sunlight, and um, both of the solar panels hooked up over the daytime. And then I'll pretty well go to sleep and my battery will be about 95, 90%. So with the two fr uh, fridge and the freezer running, good sunlight, I probably could last a couple of days. But one bad day of solar, I'd have to start the car. But that's still pretty good in my opinion. Um, the solar I've got and the fridges I run and the freezer, it's 135 litres of fridge uh, freezer room. So it's a fair bit. So I'm quite happy with that. Move on. Uh, you got your BCDC there. Um, these are a couple of light switches, basically dead man switches, I call them. Uh, one's for your cell fire. Now you see the cell fire lighting up now. Or was. There it is. Um, 
And this one here is for these here. So them lights I told you earlier, they are great. That's when we're on the other side, I use it for when we're cooking or we're having dinner. Perfect. Next one is these hardcore lights, interior lights, orange. That's for the bugs apparently. Works, not too badly, is what it is. And that's like a dimmer switch as well. Um, they're a must, in my opinion, must. Um, move on, you got your USB and your cigarette, cigarette outlets. Just to charge me um, batteries. Uh, then you got your 12 volt outlet here. So that actually runs the tent. So we've got lights and power up there. And also that will go through the back of my car into my freezer on the other side, which I will show you. Um, it was a bit scary drilling a hole in my brand new car, but uh, uh, checked 50 times, drill once. Pretty well what I've done. Um, so that's that. So we're moving to the front now. There's not too much in here, but I'll show you anyway. So when we first get in here, got the throttle controller. I actually don't use it when I'm driving around town or even on the highway. I only use it when I'm in the sand. I pretty well would use it in the mud as well, but the sand's just a mask. It gives me that responsiveness that I need. Um, even though I could probably put it in sports mode, uh, time again, I'd probably still end up buying it. It wasn't too expensive. Quite easy to hook up. Moving on to this little gauge here. That's the gauge for the sub tank. Uh, there's a little switch there. That's for the transfer pump. Uh, it takes probably about 30 to 40 to 50 minutes. I haven't really timed it to uh, actually transfer the whole 125 litres into the main tank. But that's the rough time I've um, had it going for. So yeah, round about that. These are the masks, these bedrock uh, floor mats. They are unreal. They're like a little wheelbarrow. Uh, basically just unhook them out and just tip all the dirt out. They're a must. I've got them on both sides. Jacinta's got hers. And there's some in the back as well. I'll show you. Uh, move on. I've got a steady fascia. Um, with like my spot lights, my reverse lights and my tray lights. We try obviously I don't use them with that in there. Uh, not too bad. I like it. You'll, um, yeah, they just make it look apart and a bit more neater. Got a GME radio here. Um, yeah, it is what it is, um, what is it, it's an XRS, I think they're a 3030 or something like that, um, yeah, I like it good enough, I can connect to it with like my phone as well, but that's just, yeah, I haven't done it yet, but good enough in my opinion, hooked apart, and that's pretty well it, um, there's the leather seats in the FX4 with the leather interior, easy to clean, um, but yeah, it's good enough. I'm just gonna take you to the back. I have taken the seats out. It's basically just a bit of ply with marine carpet over it. I've used the existing holes from where the seat gets mounted to. And on the same as the other side, uh, you'll see this middle uh, plate just here. Basically that's using existing bolt holes from the seat as well. But that's for the freezer. So basically I strap that to a freezer there. Uh, that works well uh, at the front I've basically just put a nut insert into the um, seat well and bolted it to a bit of 25 by 25 mil tube and, and put a couple of little um, hooks there tie down points whatever you want to call them we use the hockey straps to uh, strap in our four boxes we run one each and then one for a one for hiking and one for just our extra clothes. And there's the golf clubs. And you'll see the bedrocks in the back as well. These here from Crash Pad, they are really handy. Um, I've seen other better ones on the market, I think. Uh, Explore Life does one. I think his looks a lot better, but they're working. Um, they just keep all our toiletries in, as you see. The sinners over there, yeah. Let's not forget the hat rack. It's no genius how I done that. Just a bit of bloody slinky string from Bunnings. Tied it to our uh, handles. Good enough. Onto the other side, the freezer. You can just see how it's strapped in there. And there's our uh, power. 
come in. I've got it actually turned on at the moment. Nothing's in there. Basically, that wire comes from the second battery that I'll show you later about. Just goes through the back of the car. Was very scary drilling a hole in the back of the car for myself. Uh, it's just got a gland with a nut. So the wire goes through, it's got a little seal and it is waterproof, apparently. But it's good enough. Um, and that will just run 24 seven on the back battery. But just quickly show you underneath the bonnet, what I've got, not too much. Secondary fill filter and a catch cam from Western Filters. Uh, you just pretty well type in your car and it's pretty straightforward. Um, I put it on myself, not too hard. Uh, pretty well, the secondary filter is just clip each hose and put your new hoses on. Quite easy. Uh, catch cam is a little bit more trickier. Um, running these hoses, you'll see I've got a bit of uh, tape and that. They do like to rub on each other and also parts of the car. Uh, the engine is a bi-turbo, so basically a little turbo feeds a big turbo. It's only a two litre, so it's a very quite small engine. Uh, my engine brake isn't good, so that's the reason why it's a probably a two litre. Uh, the ranges do come in a 3.2. Would I go a 3.2 or stay with the bi-turbo? Uh, 3.2, in my opinion, for towing, just with that engine brake would be handy, even though I've never towed, but yeah. But I'm still happy with the um, two litre bi-turbo 10-speed gearbox. And you're probably thinking 10-speed, you know, what RPM does your car do at 100? What I've got with the ring resistance and the weight, I about sit about 1400 in 10th gear. Uh, and pretty well every 10 kilometers an hour is every gear. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty cool. I do, I do enjoy the 10 speed box, but yeah, pretty cool. Now to the tent. So it is a Bush Company DX27. It's one of the smaller ones where it doesn't lift up as much as the new ones, and it's lighter than most of them. Well, I think all of them, to be honest. Um, we did have another tent. I think I've said that before, uh, but this one here is unreal. So I'll um, I'll put the drone up and I'll show you me unpacking it and um, show you how easy it is or how it is with the wind. <laughs> so there we go. Didn't I make that look hard? So it's up. I'll show you inside. Come on in. Mm. So, we've got three pockets up here, two zips, one without. I just put my magazines and all the rest. You can imagine what else goes in there. I'll let you decide that one. Um, then we go down to here. I'll just extend the GoPro. So we've got two USBs, you'll see a cable in there. That's to charge our phone. And then you've got a cigarette port in there. Basically we use a cigarette port to keep our fan on charge. We've just got a little uh, Coleman fan that we got from Anaconda. Works a treat actually. Um, cools down a little bit. Um, a lot of people ask you to get hot in here. Um, yeah, we do a little bit, but once we get that fan going, uh, it turns to be not too bad. Um, then we do under our uh, windows and our front door and the breeze in here is pretty damn good to be honest. So not really, just we are camping. We know what we signed up for. So it is what it is really. Um, we just deal with it. And it's got two pockets down here. So Bush Company um, have built it for you to sleep down there. It's actually just a bit too close to our heads. Uh, and yeah, so it's not very nice so there. We put our heads down this end, as you'll notice. Um, yes, we do drag mud over our pillows, but we just deal with it. Uh, a must do with these type of tents, in my opinion, is put an egg lay mattress in between your top sheet and your mattress. It's about 30 mil and 
It's absolutely a lifesaver, to be honest. Absolute lifesaver. It, I haven't had a bad sleep yet. Like, I haven't woke up with a bad back or a sore back. So it's very handy there. Um, like I said, you got 12 volt power up here. You got a couple of lights up here. And there's your orange light for the bugs. Uh, and there's your zip for that. And there's another zip there. There's the outside. Uh, so this is our front door. And it takes me about a minute to put up. I fast forward the footage. But it takes about a minute and a minute to put it down, uh, which is so easy. Uh, we put it up, put it down every day. So yeah, it's a no-brainer to buy one of these in my opinion. Yes, they're expensive, but they are really good. Really, really good to be honest. And we're 100% happy with it. So that's the tent now. I'll um, put it back down and it's a lot easier to put back down. And um, yeah, I'll get into it. Didn't I make that look easier? Er, uh, anyway. It is so much easier to put back down. Um, so now we're coming to the end of the rig rundown. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a few things that I would have changed or what I wish I'd done. So it makes things a little bit easier for you. Um, central locking in the canopy. I just wish I could push the button and it all locks. Uh, just be quicker, but I can deal with just walking around and locking them all. For now, all good. Uh, next one is I wish I put the airbags before I left Broken Hill home. Uh, why I did break a set of leafies, you can work out why, whatever your opinion, that's yours, I don't care. Um, so that may have not happened, or I don't know if it would have, but. So airbags, I wish I'd done when I got them home, but is what it is. Uh, third one, I would have bought a 79 series, knowing what I know now and how heavy these things are. Um, they got more of a payload and so and you can actually stand them even more again um so you can work out why i'd probably want that the reason why i didn't get a 79 series though is because i drove to work and i just didn't want to get in the car park into the car and it's the exact same car um that's my opinion on that am i pissed off i didn't make that decision of getting a 79 not really the fx4s or the Rangers themselves are just beautiful cars to drive. They're like a small 200 series chopped already. Um, yeah, that's my opinion. I love the car. Um, would I change? I don't know. Yeah, I would for the payload, make things a little bit more. Yeah, you get what I'm getting at there, I'm sure. So everyone wants to know how much, which totally understand because building them things are quite expensive and the money, the numbers add up very, very quickly. So to get that right there is about $130,000. So that's with six tires, rooftop tent. The rooftop tent was five and a half. The canopy was a little bit over 40 grand. I stopped adding up. Um, the rims, tires, the ARB work, all the bull bar, tow bar, uh, suspension, extra fuel tank was about 25 grand. Like I said, I stopped adding up. I just kept what I want, I just put on it. Um, the car before COVID times was 55. I think they've gone up about eight to nine grand now. So that's just crazy if you ask me. Um, so it's about 130, 100, yeah, it's about that. Then the time you start putting like your, your bag on there in the back, your bin bag, um, your portal, the extra gas bottle, the uh, seat covers, and then your recovery gear. It adds up, and I totally understand. It is quite heartbreaking when you see them numbers rise. Like in Broken Hill, that's a small house. Um, so it is crazy, but it's what I wanted. That's what just sitting and wanted. Um, yeah, I'm 100% happy with it. So Boss Aluminium, absolute cracking build. I absolutely love the canopy. Uh, rooftop tents, just another one. Save the money. Just got a little bit extra money and get one of them. You will not regret it. 
there's lots on the market too lots narrow ones a lot lighter ones do like it so um that's the end of the um rig rundown thank you very very much for watching um i've got a couple more episodes before i've made this um if you want to hit the subscribe button makes me happy makes your sinner uh, i'm happy as well knowing that i'm not wasting her time and my time on my youtube videos but uh, thank you for watching again safe travels all the very best